All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Maura Sweeney, who is in Clearwater, Florida. How are you doing, Maura? I am great, John. Thanks so much for having me join you today. Absolutely. And Moore is a world traveler and pioneer in the happiness movement uh, and has addressed uh, audiences in 15 countries and across the USA on personal leadership, influence and the power of happiness in the workplace. So what I thought we would start off by talking about is this, this fascinating idea of self-leadership, right? Uh, because this is something I think that a lot of people don't understand. Or as you speak about, you know, people think, well, I don't have a title. I don't manage people. I don't have a, yeah, have a sphere of influence, if you like. Therefore, how can I be a leader? So let's 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 talk a bit like a bit about that, about how you can discover how to lead yourself, how to be a leader in your own right, lead yourself, and be an example to others. Well, John, you're right after my own heart, mm -hmm. and also um, this is such a common thing among all of us. We have all been brought up to think that unless someone gives us a title, turns us into a leader, that we really don't have any clout of our own. But the, the truth is just the opposite. Sometimes there are people that have a title, they hand out paychecks, but personally, individually and power wise, let's say their energy gives out leadership, mm -hmm. nothing of positive influence. And so a lot of what I talk about, John, are things that I learned to live by myself and learned how to, let's say, um, be the uh, the person in the lab, like the lab rat. I was uh, in corporate mm -hmm. leadership, and I had to learn how to empower all the people that were working in sales for me. And oftentimes, we might not have had the best product or the best pricing. Mm -hmm. So we had to find other ways to make ourselves bigger and ourselves more appealing to a prospective buyer, but that's something that works in all aspects of life. And so I could get down into brass tacks, but um, I speak a lot about what it is that's going on inside of us. Because if we look closely at what we think about all the time and what we, what we um, project, therefore, as a result of our thoughts, the outcome I would say like an energy center and people know us. They know us by name. They know us by maybe whatever value it is that we carry mm -hmm. with us. And we almost go out like um, an energy source. It attracts right. people and especially like people to us. And it also is a very much of a magnet that causes people to want to do business with us and to interact with us, regardless of what it is we're doing, because if they mm -hmm. like us and they're, they're they find us appealing and our energy and our value system um, appealing, then even go from one arena to another, one product category to another, people will say, it's you I want to be with. It's you I want to work with. You I want to partner with. So how do you, so how does somebody change their, their mindset or their approach if they are maybe the opposite of that? Maybe they feel unworthy. Maybe they don't feel like they're, they're, they've got anything to offer. Maybe they have the imposter syndrome, all of these things. How do you overcome this and really set yourself on a path to do exactly what you just said? Well, I think you're describing most people yep. who walk around the earth today. And of course, you get a few people that just think they're God's gift to the universe. <laughs> But for the rest of us, um, I'll use myself as an example, and then I'll bring it down to one thing so important. When I was young, I felt very disempowered. And oftentimes, I felt like a victim. I didn't like things that were being done to me. Maybe I didn't like leaders that were around me, parents, teachers, mm -hmm. maybe reducing me and not allowing me to be free. But this is so central. If people could ask themselves, and this is a, just a good way of positioning yourself at the beginning of every day and sometimes throughout the day to ask yourself, wherever I am, whatever challenge I'm facing, whatever mindset or let's say conversation is going on in my, am I perceiving myself as a victim, meaning someone mm -hmm. where life happens to us or difficulties and challenges come along, or am I viewing myself as a beneficiary? If you would take a few minutes Anybody who's listening today and go in the dictionary and look 
for definitions between victim and beneficiary. And you mm. can actually say to yourself, you know, I'm having, I'm having difficulty even with the way I see my life, my identity, right. etc. And you can always choose in the moment or in the hour that you're living in to choose to see yourself in any situation as the beneficiary. What you'll find is that it puts you on a different trajectory. The energy changes, the opportunities change because a beneficiary is someone who no matter where you are, something's going to work out good. And I remember mm -hmm. this even in my corporate life. I have so many issues coming up with people that were, you know, are on my sales team. And I'm like, a lot of the answers I didn't know. But sometimes I would have to drop it all and say, you know what? This is really good because I'm going to come up with something I never thought of before. We're going to have a creative idea. And lo and behold, John, it would happen. So we actually have to make the choice to see ourselves as a beneficiary, which changes our perception, changes our sense of self, but then it changes the energies. And again, I can't explain it, but oftentimes with a new perspective, it leads us to places where new solutions come to mind new um new ways of working with other people there were ideas that used to drop in my mind and everybody else i was working with because we chose to see things and to see ourselves as beneficiaries or that the situation we were working through was going to work out for a benefit and the key to that whole thing or let's say even the benefit to seeing yourself as a beneficiary is that you grow into confidence abilities you step into new zones maybe where you haven't been before right. and that raises your raises the energy that you operate in wherever you are mm -hmm. and with whomever you are yeah and you know what's uh, fascinating about that more is that, i mean i think sometimes you know, people who may listen may say oh well that's okay because you already have maybe some of those innate uh, skills maybe it's okay for you but i always think that people fail sometimes to look back at their life and look at all the things that they've accomplished and overcome uh to get to where they are today and when they do that they suddenly realize well i'm a much more capable person than i thought i was but we look back at the past sometimes in the wrong way we look for the wrong messages from it which goes back to the same thing. Oh, poor me. Yeah. I didn't have the right upbringing, didn't have the right education, didn't end up with the right job. I made a mistake here. And yet I'll tell you something, John, I've had several different careers in my past, even though now, you know, I'm a public speaker, but I use all of these as examples to share with others. Years ago, I was an executive recruiter. So working at very high level positions in Fortune 500 companies. And I would always look for individuals that showed me that they were able to work through challenges. Mm -hmm. It is the challenges that we walk through that end up showing us just how strong an individual yes. we can be. Because some of us, I'm not even putting myself in that category, but there are some people that have everything in their life is great. They have every uh, available um, success story behind them, but they have no tenacity. They have no courage. They have no confidence to go out on their own. They have no scrappiness. And I will even say this in my corporate years in, in leadership, I would always look for the scrappy people. Mm -hmm. They might not have had the best resumes, but they were the ones that if there was a difficult time, they would have the extra oomph and energy to go out, solve a problem, go the extra mile, and the success would always follow them. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you. And that's when when I used to, um, you know, interview people for positions and that I used to always ask them, like, you know, I'd say, give me an example of something you worked on that worked out and your contribution. And then I'd say, you know, tell me about something and some challenge in life, something that went wrong. And, and I would preface it by saying, I don't want the this was bad, but I turned it into this really good thing, you know, like you're taught to. And I want to know the disaster and how you survived it and how you overcame it. See, and that's exactly what I thought. But I will tell you this. There's always going to be a problem. There's always. And it's usually through those problems and challenges that we grow as individuals. And so do our businesses, because we learn how to work ourselves out of them. And um, you're right. A lot of people. And I think I blame a lot of this on our society. You know, there was a time sure. period nobody was allowed to make a mistake. And so therefore, you don't want to show any weakness or any vulnerability. But people who have gone through times, made mistakes, those are the people, if they really are working, let's say with a, a healthy attitude, 
they will tell you maybe where they made a mistake, but more than that, how they work themselves out of it and what they learned from it. And oftentimes people who've been through difficult times, they end up with a greater capacity to understand other people. They're more mm -hmm. empathetic. They're more wise. And there's a lot of additional things that come out of the problems that we have in our life if we look at them the right way. And that's really what the world needs. They need problem solvers. They need creative people. They need people, you know, can work themselves out of a challenge. And uh, people who want to be successful will want to be around people like that because the energy is always moving towards something better. Yeah, you know, I, I, I agree. And I think, and, and I agree with you, I think we need more people like that in the world today. We need problem solvers. Um, and we need more people, as you pointed out, looking at themselves as as beneficiaries rather than as, as victims. And the, the other part, too, is that the whole notion, as you said, of of being, you know, leading yourself and being an example and leadership to uh, to others. Um, I think part of that, too, is I find is like when you don't feel like you need to know everything, because that's another thing that we have in this. We live in this society where, oh, if I'm put in this position at this job, well, then I should know everything about it. No, I trust people who will tell me when they don't know something. That for me is a big trust builder. When I ask somebody who, who's an expert in something and they say, hmm, you know, I don't know. I can find out for you, though, or whatever. I trust that much more than somebody who come up with some garbage answer because they feel like they should know. You know, I, t I couldn't agree with you more. In fact, I'll tell you, my corporate career, I was really, let's say, not unwilling, but a reluctant leader. And I had no choice. I was just being mm -hmm. moved up. And there were many things I didn't know how to do. So I really felt incapable, let's say, of my of several of my promotions. But you know what I ended up doing, John? I would find people that were really good at certain things I didn't know about. And I'd pull them into the mix and I'd say, I heard you're the expert. Come in, teach me, teach the rest of our group. And you know what those kinds of things do? They build mm. trust. They build respect for a team. And it also gives everybody this sense of, oh, it's okay to be myself. I can be more vulnerable. But then here's the thing, when everybody takes what they know and people are valued for their yeah. skills and their abilities, then everybody grows collectively as a result of individual knowledge. And I'll tell you, people are happier, freer. And if you're running a business or a sales organization, when people know that you want to bring others in and you want their ideas and you want to ask them for some advice or whatever, um, generally you'll find that people like you more and they're also, let's say if they are again, working on your team or whatever, they tend to be far more faithful as employees because they mm. know their opinions, their knowledge, their ideas are of value, which goes right into the, uh, the power of happiness, because when people feel that way, when they feel valued and they feel free to express some of their new ideas, then they grow and you're strengthening up and making a greater success of the whole. Yeah, no, and I agree. And I think the the other thing I know is as as in, as employers and as running companies in the past or whatever, the thing that you want most from people is you want to be surprised by them in a good way. So surprised by them, like somebody who takes some initiative, somebody who goes off and says, well, I, I was at that meeting and I, I, I heard this and I did that. That's real leadership and initiative. And that's something that you go, yippee, somebody just surprised me. They didn't wait around. This is fantastic. Oh, I totally. And I think a lot of the rules, maybe the old rules are changing. You know, everybody used to be very buttoned up. Everybody did have to be perfect. Mm. Nobody was allowed to make a mistake. You had to have just the right you know, resume, we don't even use that term resume anymore, but everything yeah. had to be perfect. And you know what I think people are looking for today? I know it, in fact, I won't say I think, and I've seen this as a trend over the past 10 years, it's becoming ever so much more uh, important. It's authenticity. When you could meet yeah. somebody who lets you know they're a regular person and they're very much like you, but they have their own abilities and interests and skills and talents, and you acknowledge them, and you share with them some of your strengths as well as your weaknesses, suddenly you've knocked down a lot of the walls of pretense. And now you have, remember you said you'd like to be surprised. Now you have yeah. a very dynamic, interactive, 
working environment and culture where just about anything can happen because people are freer to be themselves and to step out and say, hey, what do you think if we try this? Yeah. No, and, and I agree. And then you need to have you need to have that culture in your organization where you go, um, OK, let's give it a go. And and it's OK if we come back uh, a week or a month later and we go, all right, well, that didn't work, at least. Uh, but now we know now we know that doesn't work and we can move on to something else rather than, well, that was a waste of a, of a week or waste of a month. No, it wasn't. It was actually extremely valuable. It was extremely valuable. Very true. And I, you see the difference. One is, oh, that was a waste, which of course shows no respect for the person who had the idea or you, let's say, is the leader for saying yes to it. But to say, all right, we gave it a whirl. That didn't exactly work for us. How can we learn from what we just did and try something else that's new? And then again, you enter back into that creative, dynamic space where people are constantly working together, using their creativity and their talents and coming up with something thing new and often exciting yeah and i think the other thing is just i think people nowadays that uh, when you go into the workplace i think you need to be a lot more flexible yourself than ever before and be ready and also be ready for changing priorities we, we've seen with the covid like ready for business pivots there's a lot of things that can happen and i feel that sometimes people as you mentioned earlier when they used to be all buttoned down i mean some people who still cling on to their job description and go well that's not really part of my job i mean and i always say oh forget that the only the only sentence in your job description that matters is the one where it says and any other tasks that may be assigned to you. <laughs> so true. And that is very true because the old corporate models where everybody was in the box and your job defined you. That's another thing. When we were going back mm -hmm. to the original reason for our call today, people would see themselves inside the box. They'd operate inside mm -hmm. the box. They would be kept inside the box. But today the boxes are gone. There are so many people who are working for themselves there are so many people that are entrepreneurs and that whole corporate structure where there used to be a separate marketing and advertising department and R and D and, you know, and, uh, you know, customer service. Now you're it. Now you are yeah. it. If there's a task, you're going to be the one tasked with figuring out how to work it out. And there's so much room for personal growth in that. And I will say something further that maybe people need to hear today. Maybe there's somebody who's working in there in a new, a new environment and they are that entrepreneur, the very thing that you may think is just gonna be the end of you because you're exhausted and you're over your head. If you keep working it and if you have that vision, you'll find that it develops you into the next level business person and individual than you were before. Because every new challenge, every new place you have to move yourself into helps you develop. And the other thing too, is when you work yourself through challenges, your confidence grows. And when your confidence grows, your ability to interact with other people also increases. And then if you've got more personal confidence, people are more confident of doing business with you and partnering with you. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And I also just wanted to pick up what you said about the authenticity piece, because I think that's critical as well. I think people are, are, are tired of, of you know fakeness and all of that but uh, but the only thing i do worry about is that you know i see all the time like learn how to be more authentic you know go uh, authenticity training and i'm like what what are you talking about here how do you get trained to be <laughs> yeah, authentic though right i know but but that's the point but i think uh, but i think now is the time is you know just i mean authentic lovely big word just be yourself <laughs> yes Authentic. Now that's pretty funny. Authenticity training because now you're adding, um, you're adding plasticity to yeah. a person that already feels a little challenged, right? Exactly. But I think that, I think just people right now, and again, it was a trend, but it's getting more and more the case. And I think it also speaks about society as a whole. Mm -hmm. People are looking or what's real. Yep. So if you're just a regular person trying to make the best of things, trying to give the best service, trying to make good on your word, that is your sense of authenticity. Yep. And you know, too, some people are a little quirky. Like I know there's some things I'm really, really good at and other things I'm not. And I don't mind sharing those parts of me because then it makes me more credible to other people. Mm -hmm. And so if that doesn't mean, if I could add to John, yeah. you know, there's some people well, I'm just being myself. 
Right. And meanwhile, they want to walk around in clothing like some people do in Walmart when they're wearing mm-hmm. their pajamas yeah. and their slippers. <laughs> now that you could say is authenticity, but I would say, let's say this, be your best yeah. authentic self. <laughs> yeah, I don't, yeah, no, I, I would agree because I, I, I love that when people say that, you know, they say, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm sorry I'm late, but you know me, I'm always late and I'm going. And, and at the end of the day, all you're left thinking is, so you just think you're more important than the rest of us and our time doesn't matter, right? It, it's, it's not, I'm sorry, that's not an excuse. That's something you can change. As you said, you know, if, if, that's, if that's you being you, well, you is crap, change it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's very, very true. And you know what, too, one more thing if, um, before we finish. I want to make sure that everybody who's listening today would think about if they want to be a person of who's viewed as being a leader, if they want to be a person of influence, think about a value, a value mm-hmm. that's important to you. And that value could be something like honesty, um, excellent customer service. There's a lot of different types of values. For some people, it's truth. When you carry an ongoing value with you, and that value permeates through not only your personality, but also your work ethic, and it's a, it's a st- stable part of who and what you are, and people will respond and react to that so that even if you move from one situation to another, one product area to another, they'll think, you know what? I I love that person or I love working with that person because every time I'm around them, I feel that value. Now, they may not even know what that value is that is important to you, but they will be drawn and attracted to that. And they'll also recommend you to other people. And what a great way to have that clout before you walk into a meeting or you meet with someone because people know you by an internal value that sort of separates you from other people. So it's not only what you're doing and maybe the product line that you're working with or your business, but it's the value that goes along with who and what you are. Very powerful. Yeah, no, I love I love that you mentioned that because I think that's so important. And I think a lot of people haven't figured out what those values are just because, you know, life gets in the way and business gets in the way and we're always constantly distracted. But I think if you take a moment to figure out what are the things that what are the values that you hold, I agree with you. I think that becomes it becomes your North Star in many ways. And I think a lot of people feel kind of rudderless right now. I would agree. And you know what? I think you made a very good point. That is there's and so many messages coming at us that we don't even know who we are or what's important to us. But you know, a little bit of time for reflection, even in the morning before you start your day or in the evening before you put your head down at night to look back at the day and think, what were some of my best moments? Where did I feel my best? Where was I most successful? Who are the people I like being around? And what elements are in there that I can start replicating? And by virtue of the opposite question, where did I feel my worst? Where did I perform my poorest? Or where did I feel most awkward? What was going on? And how can I extract myself in the future from those kinds of behaviors or relationships. And then you really are putting yourself onto the true north. You're starting to learn how to direct yourself from the inside out. And when you do that, Mm -hmm. again, like I said at the beginning, you become something of your own energy source or energy force field that people start to relate to and resonate with. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. And that's a great takeaway for people. Uh, just find, just examine that start of the day, end of the day, just reflect and find find those things because it's much better than watching the news, believe me, because the news is just I think anything's better than watching Rega- the news. <laughs> yeah, because as I always say, regardless of where you sit on the political spectrum, your news is designed to provoke, re-provoke, you know, intense emotions in you. It's not there to inform you. Very so, true. Follow, follow Maura's advice about what to do before you go to bed or wake up in the morning. Listen, this has been fantastic. And all of Laura's informa- Maura's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. What am I? I'm the trademarked ambassador of happiness. And here's something that everybody should know. I started getting involved in speaking about things that were important to me. One of them being happiness and success from the inside out. Imagine being over age 50, having no corporate background of note in that arena. No uh, country. And I'm at this point considered the midlife woman and ending up being 
the internationally known uh, trademarked ambassador of happiness speaking in other countries. It all went to a value that was important to me. So anybody that's interested in anything that I'm doing, find me. I am on um, moreforyou.com. I am a public speaker. You could find me on Speaker Hub. And the other thing, if people tend to enjoy listening, I have a podcast, Maura Sweeney, Living Happy Inside Out. And anyone who wants a public speaker for their leadership group, you can find me very easily. Thank you, John. Yes, and thank you, Maura. Fantastic insights. And thank you for watching and listening. And we'll see you all again soon. Thank you. Yeah.